Just wanted to add on a little bit to the previous video about dihybrid crosses and its relationship to meiosis. This is just meant to illustrate Mendel's law of independent assortment and, and how it relates to meiosis and dihybrid crosses. You can see that during metaphase, so this is a chromosome. This is one chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids, and these are homologous chromosomes. So during prophase one, these homologous chromosomes, because they're the same size and they have the same genes, oops, this is not the same size, I gotta fix that a little bit, are going to find each other, are going to find each other because they're homologous. And when they find each other, they're going to do some crossing over. So I'm not gonna illustrate that, but it's gonna join up and they might exchange alleles with each other, okay? Now when they come here to line up, when they come here to line up, they could line up in many different ways. They could line up like this, or they could line up like this. It's just a simple matter of two to the power of the number of chromosome pairs there are. And if the alleles are different, like a big Q, little Q, big Y, little Y, then you can end up creating different combinations. So look at this specific combination. I could end up with a gamete here that has little r, big Y, big Q, and one with big R, little Y, little Q. Just by flipping this around, I've created a new gamete, little r, big Y, little Q. Now this is considering three of these together. For our intents and purposes, we've only had to consider up to two at the same time. But this random alignment, random assortment during metaphase one contributes to the part of the infinite variety. Now this is only three of the 23 chromosome pairs that exist. So there's 23, so 20, 20 additional chromosome pairs if I were to draw this thing all the way down. So you can imagine two to the power of 23 is a number of combinations and that's a big number. Add on top of that, when crossing over can ac actually happen. And when crossing over actually happens, it's not just one section that gets, gets exchanged. Uh, this part here can overlap with this or it can overlap with the part behind it. You can have sometimes up to eight different crossing points. Those crossing points are called chiasmata and that happens during prophase one. So adding the crossing over together with the random assortment during metaphase one basically contributes to an infinite variety of gametes that you can actually produce. Mendel's law of independent assortment states that these allele pairs separate independently of each other during the formation of gametes. What that means is, and in order for that to be true, it means that these genes we're talking about have to be on different chromosomes. So it is true that R and Y, if they are indeed located on different chromosomes, they will segregate, separ separate independently of each other. So big R doesn't necessarily have to go with big Y, it could come with little y. We assume, probability-wise, that this situation is just as likely to happen as this situation. So we would expect an equal outcome of all the gametes that exist there. So hopefully you understand what we're looking at. We're looking at the nucleus here, here's the cell membrane. Here is the nuclear membrane, which would be disappearing during prophase one. So hopefully that made sense. If you add this together with the previous video on dihybrid crosses, Hopefully this should make a lot more sense to you. Next, we're gonna be moving on to gene linkage. And so it's important that you understand how this works and this idea of Mendel's law being followed because we're going to uh, end up breaking Mendel's law. It turns out that Punnett squares, Punnett squares and all the predicted ratios, you know, 25%, 25%, that stuff only holds true if Mendel's law of independent assortment holds true. And his law only holds true if we are talking about genes that are on different chromosomes. So in gene linkage, we're gonna talk about, well, what actually happens if the two genes we're interested in, what if Y is not on a separate chromosome, but it's actually on the same chromosome? Then all of this falls apart. But Mendel's law is very useful for us because we can actually examine an actual cross and the outcome to find out if the genes are actually linked or not. If they are linked, then nothing is going to follow the Punnett square ratio. If everything is on separate, diff separate chromosomes, then we should expect that all the numbers will fit nicely just as uh, Mendel and Punnett have predicted. Hopefully that made sense and see you in the next one.